in a desperate situation for her younger siblings. Where her mother got sick with lung cancer. And during that time, she took on the task of not only, not only caring for her siblings, not only caring for her mother, not only cleaning and cooking and being the, the provider basically in the family, but she still continued to serve the Lord. Many of us will turn our back on the Lord when the situation gets rough. Hallelujah. Many of us, when the money gets tight, the first place that we're going to cut off is the church. Well, my God, my God. When her mother died, 39 years old, young lady. When she died, she wasn't angry at God like lots of folks are, lots of Christians are, matter of fact. People think God has done them wrong. They often run to the world for comfort, especially young people. Her mother died on a Sunday, she says. Her mother died on a Sunday. And her words after her mother died was this, Sister Sand. She said, after the coroner came and got my mom and took my mom in order to prepare her for autopsy and stuff. After the coroner came, she said, what did I do? I went to church. I went to church. I went to church. When you are suffering for the cause of Christ, those who know the Lord use, use this to see your suffering. Those, those who don't know the Lord, they looking at you to see how you suffer. They want to see how you suffer. If the first thing that comes out of your mouth is a few choice curse words, if the first thing that comes from, to your mind is that you want to uh, uh, hurt somebody who's hurt you, if the first thing comes to your heart that you want to do unto them as they did unto you, then you are not suffering righteously for Christ. Yes. When, when, you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you when you are suffering, those who are watching you, watching you, are watching you to see if you plant seeds in their hearts. Huh? The seed of suffering crossed over from the Jews to the Romans. The seed was planted as people who didn't mind suffering in the natural bring spiritual deliverance traveled the Roman roads throughout the known world. The same people who were cast into stadiums to be killed by lions, but yet they were willing to suffer. Yet they were willing to be killed for the cause of Christ. Yet they were willing to say, I will suffer this. When when uh, when that um, that first major shooting occurred in the schools, I think it was, I can't remember the name, but it begins with a D. Columbine, Columbine, Columbine. Yeah, Columbine, Colorado. This guy, this young man was walking around asking people, telling people to deny Jesus and live. He was telling these young people to deny Jesus and live. And I'm sure there probably was some who denied him, but there was some who would not deny him. And God made sure that someone lived in order to give the testimony of the young lady who did not deny Jesus. The young lady who said, you can go and kill me if you want to, but I'm not going to deny my Lord and Savior. I'm not going to deny who he is. I'm not going to deny his deity. There are young people who are still out there who won't deny the deity of Christ. Jesus, before he was arrested in the garden, he chided the disciples, asking them, could you not suffer with me for just a little while? Could you not suffer with me for just a little while? Could you not pray, watch, and pray with me for just a little while? The simple act of praying with and for the Lord seemed too much for even them. And obviously, it's too much for even us. This upcoming Wednesday, we're going to have a prayer service at church. Hallelujah. We're going to begin at 6.30 probably. And we're going to keep on praying and keep on praying and keep on praying. We're not going to be on a time schedule. We're going to just pray until the Lord releases. How many are going to show up for that? Huh? How many will make the sacrifice? Huh? And don't be saying, well, Pastor, I work 15 hours a day. I work 40 hours a day. I work a lot of hours, too. I spend it up older than most of you. Huh? Make the sacrifice as unto God. If you want to see a change occur in West Memphis, if you're tired of the killings, if you're tired of the 
abuse of children. If you tired, if you're just sick and tired, hallelujah, of the corruption in the government here. If you're sick and tired, just sick and tired of the wrong that's being done, the drugs that are being trafficked through here, and the drug addicts. Huh? If you're sick and tired of the drug transactions going bad and young men losing their lives on both sides of the bullet, if you're sick and tired of that, then you should be willing to suffer through prayer. What's your response when God calls you? What's your response? What's your response when he calls you to suffer? What's your response when he calls you to suffer so others will be drawn unto them? What is your response? What's your response? And Anaj's response was to take the Lord at his word. He went to Saul and told him, Brother Saul, Saul, Brother Saul, I've come at the beckoning of the Lord to bring relief to your current situation. How many know that God will send relief to your current situation as long as you are diligently praying unto God? As long as you are telling, Lord, for you are living, for you I die. As long as you are willing to go through, God will send the answer to your prayer in the midst of your circumstance and your situation. This is why when you're in the midst of a dark circumstance or a dark situation, is you don't give in while you're in the middle of it because God has already sent relief to you in the middle of your situation. But if you give in, you will turn your back on the relief that God has sent to you. Saul, Saul, when those scales fell off Saul's eyes, such shape he had no idea what he was in for. If he only knew what would happen, he probably said, put the scales back on, brother. Huh? Paul's suffering was his, is categorized in, in 2 Corinthians 11. He was beaten five times using the Roman cat of nine tails. The same thing. He was three times beaten with rods. He was stoned many times. Uh, he suffered shipwrecks. He, he spent a night and a day hanging onto a board in the middle of the sea. Uh, he, he had to be on an island with all of these headhunters and cannibals but he had to sit there and eat with them. Oh my God, my God. He was in danger many times. He he was weary. He was pained. He, he had a, a thorn in his side. Hallelujah. He had to suffer with being cold. He had to suffer with being naked at times. He had to suffer with being hungry at times. But Paul did not give up. What you may be currently going through could be to prepare you to go through what God has for you in order to bring glory to his name. We've got to expect that we're going to suffer at the hands of the world. But what shocks us, and I mean, I know it shocks me, even though I'm saved, sanctified, fire baptized, will run on you in a minute, even though, I, even though it's that, it still shocks me when Christians do me wrong. It still shocks me, but yet I'm going to love them. I'm going to care for them. I'm going to continue to pray for them. I'm going to continue to put their, lift their names up before God. And just like God, those who I lift their name up, he said, go and see about them. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's disturbing when fellow Christians do that. Hallelujah. It's disturbing. It's disturbing when fellow Christians are the ones that are at the wheel doing this, driving this. Can I get just one witness? Anybody been through that? Amen. Anybody been mistreated by a Christian? Amen. Oh, I'm just saying. Maybe it's just me. I don't, maybe it's just me. So saying it's just me. Only I've been mistreated by a Christian. Only me. Huh? O only me. It's only me that'll make secret Facebook pages about and post about. It's only me that throw shade and not you. Uh, uh. It's, uh, no, no, no. It's only me that other pastors will go after your folks. Oh, I'm just saying. It's just me. Oh, okay, okay, let me stop. It's just me. It's just me. It's just me. But look at God. He said, when they persecute you, love them. When they mistreat you, love them. Huh? When they will deny you food, provide food for them. When you couldn't go to them for a penny, but yet they come to you for rent money, if you got to do it. Huh? You can't tell me he's not a good God. Huh, you cannot tell me he would not turn the situation around. Huh? See, see, while you are able to provide for them, you have to realize it's God's mercy and grace that allowed you to continue to be in a position to provide for them. Oh, my God, my God. I mean, we expect the world to persecute us, don't we? Like, yeah, we know this is going to come. Uh-oh, when that other foot fall. But when our brothers and sisters in Christ 
Jesus suffered the same thing. Mm. He says, in Psalms it describes the torture he would go through and it says, he who I ate bread with has lifted up his heel against me. He who I loved and I cared for would turn me over for a few cents. He who, oh my God, but even in this Jesus told him before Judas had even, had even, had even betrayed him. Jesus told him, he said that, he said that I selected all of you and want to use the devil. Mm. I'm going to love you anyway. Hallelujah. Because you have a purpose that you're going to fulfill. My God, my God. Don't you realize that whether Jesus, or if Judas betrayed Jesus or not, Jesus would still go to the cross? He would have still went to the cross. Someone else would have been done, done the honor of doing that or the dishonor of doing that. Huh? Judas could have made the choice to say, I'm not going to sell my Lord unto the cross. He could have made that choice. See, Judas in his mind did not realize that they would do to Jesus. He thought he was just turning over a common everyday person that they would just whip a little bit and let go. Huh? My God, my God. How is it, how is it, how is it that the same people who a few days before were saying Hosanna to the king crucified him, how is it that the same people who were cheering you on just a few days before are now the ones who are your chief persecutors? How is it? How is it? Oh, it don't matter how it is. The thing is, is that we have to suffer for the sake of the cross. And God says, I need you to suffer in this. I was meditating the other day, and the words the song, to the song, what a friend we have in Jesus came to me. And the part that I really focused in on, I don't know why, but I focused in on this part. Oh, what needless pain we bear. See, there's some pain we got to bear, but there's some needless pain we bear. There's some needless pain we bear, huh? There, there, there's some needless pain we bear. Somebody better hear what I'm saying. There's some needless pain we bear. And as I begin to meditate and think on that thing, I begin to meditate and think on that thing, I realize the Lord dropped into my spirit. There are three perspectives which allow that we have in our valley experience. There are three perspectives in the valley experience. There's the hard-headed perspective, there's a rebellious perspective, and then there's the progressive perspective. Stay with me. What's your perspective while you're in the valleys of life? The hard-headed perspective is stubborn and want to stay in one place. I ain't moving. I'm going to stand here until I become a pillar of salt. That's the hard-headed perspective. That hard-headed perspective turns his back on the things of God. That's the hard-headed perspective. Then there's the rebellious perspective. Not only are they worse than the stubborn perspective, they're worse, they're worse than any other perspective. Because rebellious perspective, they will not only turn their back on God, they'll begin to go in the opposite direction. It's bad enough to be hard-headed. It's bad enough to be stubborn. It's bad enough. But when you turn your back on God and begin to do things that are contrary to his will, my God, my God. See, this is where the word perverse comes in. At. And people think we're not talking about something perverse. When we say the word perverse, we're talking about some pervert who's holding candy out to a child. But see, perverse means a whole lot more than that. The enemy will want you to believe perverse means simply that. And you're like, no, I'm not perverse. But when you're turning your back on God and going totally against what God has called you to do, when you not only go against it, but you begin to do things that are contrary, totally contrary to the will of God, then you are being perverse. So we got the hard head perspective. We got the rebellious perspective. And then there's progressive perspective. David said, Yea, do I walk through where? The valley of the shadow of death. Oh, but let's, let's, let's walk back to that action verb there. Huh? Let's walk back to the action verb. I'm, I'm not an English major, but I know a little bit about English. Let's walk back to that action verb. That action verb is walk. What am I doing now? I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm standing. If I do this, what am I doing? I'm running. I'm running. David said, yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow death? When he walked through the valley of shadow death, what is he really saying? He said, I'm walking without fear, man. I got my strut on. Huh? 
I got my lean on because I got this going on. I'm working this thing, huh? Oh, my God. See, those who are in fear, they'll begin to run through the valley of the shadow of death for their lives. But those who, those who are in doubt will stand in place. But when you're confident in what God has called you to do, you will begin to walk through the valley of the shadow of death because each and every one of us is going to have a valley experience that we're going to go through. It's a matter of your perspective when you make it through the valley. All three perspectives have a beginning in the battle. Not necessarily knowing that they've done their valley experience. Some of you can, some of you are in the middle of your valley experiences. Oh my God, you're in the middle of your valley experiences. And God is ready to pour out. God has already commanded his angels to, to help you. Huh? See, that, that, it's something about God. While you're in the middle of your valley experience, God doesn't tell you to stop and be still. He's telling you to keep on walking. And while you're walking through the valley, right, because the valley is the low place, while you're walking through the valley, God is saying, look up toward the hills from which come at your help. Your help is all around you. I am your help. I am your savior. I am your redeemer. I'm the one that keeps you. Look up toward the hills and you're going to see the angels that are keeping the shadow from overtaking you. My God, my God. Stand on your feet, y'all. I need you to suffer this. Turn to your neighbor and say, God needs us to suffer this. Turn to the other neighbor and say, he needs you too to suffer through this. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and really look him in the eye and hold his hand and begin to pull on him a little bit and say that God is going to pull you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you've got to learn to suffer while you're going through your valley experience. You've got to learn to suffer and continue to walk while going through this thing. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I close with the scripture found in Genesis 8 and 22. While the earth remained in seed time and harvest, and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. The scripture speaks to, to the sacrifice of the suffering that we do for God is the seed. Our sacrifice is the seed that we plant. A young lady ministered on the other day when she was talking about the account, the bank account that we have. Hallelujah. Oh, we don't know that there are times where we have to make deposits into the account. And there are times we make deposits into the account that we have to learn how to fill out the withdrawal slip the right way. There's ways that you fill out the withdrawal slip. If my name is Donald Duck, but I'm putting Mickey Mouse on the withdrawal slip for an account that don't belong to him. You've got to learn how to fill out the withdrawal slip. How do you fill out the withdrawal slip? You fill out the withdrawal slip by first suffering the, the hurt, the pain that it takes in order to build that account. Yeah. And once you build that account, hallelujah, now you got money in the bank that you don't even know about. There is some favor that God is ready to put on your life that you don't even know about. There are some breakthroughs that he's ready to give you but you don't even know about. Hallelujah. It's being held up because you don't even know that it's yours to have. The healers that God has for you, he put in the bank a long time ago when Jesus was struck on his back for you. Hallelujah. And you all you got to do to withdraw from that is to accept the healing. Oh my God. We, 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 we got to learn how to pray right. We got to learn how to pray right. We got to learn how to pray right. We got to, Sister Sam, we got to learn how to pray right. We got to learn how to pray right. Hallelujah. Oh, I know, I know that there's some people who will confuse you, some who are confused by the prayer formula. But the way that you do pray is you ask God for something, and then after you ask Him for it, you begin to celebrate as if it's already there. Oh, the word tells us now faith. Huh? It said now faith. 
It don't, it don't say it don't say faith then. It says now faith. Now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I believe that I'm already gathered. There are times where we pull up to that corner over there and Sister Schaefer looks out across the lot and she said, I see the building, Pastor. I see the driveway. I see the walkway. I can just see the brick. I can imagine the second level that we're going to put on this thing. I see the taker. I see everything that God is doing for us and what he's done for us in the past. We've got to have a mindset of having now faith and believing that God is going to do something about suffering, though, Sister Sim. I tell you, it's something about suffering. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's something about suffering. The Lord, at an early age, he set me apart. At an early age, he prepared me for ministry. I didn't even know it. At an early age, he did things that would allow me not to be the favorite among yes. everybody. Oh, my, 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 my God. Hallelujah. At an early age, he did that. He he allowed me to suffer. He he allowed me not to have all the greatest things. And the reason he allowed me not to have that is because he wanted to use me for ministry. Yes. Oh, my God, my God. I need you to suffer this. I need you to suffer this. I need you to suffer. I need you to suffer this. Oh, you want your brother saved, you want your, your sister, your cousin, you want your Aunt Becky, the one who curses a lot. Everybody got one of them, right? The one who curses and the one who, who, who talks so much trash to everybody. You want them saved, but are you willing to suffer the indignity of going to them, speaking to their hearts? Are you willing to take the persecution that they're going to give you? Because they sure going to persecute you. Hallelujah. I had a friend who once told me when he found out I was saved, he broke a bottle out. Just to test me, just to see where I would go. Huh? People are going to do that when they find out you're saved. But are you willing to suffer this so that you will not be having to look down and see your family members in hell? Are you willing to go through this? Hallelujah. Something about your suffering, though, Sister Shaver. Hallelujah. You know what the Lord told me to call your name, but. There's something about the suffering, though. If I plant one seed in the ground, I'm sure to get a harvest. If I plant an apple seed in the ground, I'll get a tree. And from that tree, I'm going to get apples for years to come, years to come. All I got to do is suffer just a little bit in order to plant that seed in the ground. But when that seed is in the ground, Sister Sam, when that's, oh, glory to God. Yet I'm going to to you, you have a seed in the ground. Hallelujah. It's time for you to go harvest your seed. Hallelujah. All the hours that you have suffered at the hands of others who persecuted you, who did not like you for one reason or another, not even had a real reason, God said, that's a seed in the ground. When you plant that seed in the ground, that seed will eventually become a bush. That bush will eventually become a tree. And you begin to pick the fruit off of that tree. And inside each and every fruit are hundreds of other seeds. So therefore, when you plant a seed of suffering, hallelujah. Jesus was on the cross for about nine hours. Huh? And though nine hours it was unrighteous that he was on the cross, Sister Sam, for nine hours that he spent on the cross. Look how many people have gotten saved from the nine hours on the cross. Oh, look how many people cry out to the Lord 24 hours a day because of those nine hours that Jesus Christ spent on the cross. Hallelujah. Look how many people have given their lives unto the Lord. How many people will go into the deepest, darkest places of the jungle and minister Jesus Christ to others who've never heard of him because of those nine hours that Jesus spent on the cross. Look at all the healings that we receive in our body just because of those nine hours that Jesus spent on the cross. Oh, Just a little seed. Jesus even said, faith, just the size of a mustard seed. Huh? Hallelujah. The way God works, the way he operates is called an exchange. It's called an exchange. Huh? God will look at what's in your hand, what's in your ability to do, and he's ready to multiply that ability. Huh? But in order to multiply that ability in you, you have got to be willing to hand it over to him. Huh? Oh my God. I was listening to Perry Stone this morning and he, 
he talked about where the term, where the, where the purpose, where the, where the thing tight came from. Hallelujah. And he talked about how in old Mesopotamia that people would think in terms of their hands. God gave them ten fingers. Ten fingers. So the least that they can do is give God a tenth of what they make. Huh? It used to be a day and age in old Jewish tradition where they gave 30% to the church. They even gave first fruit. Yes. Every January, everybody, just about everybody gets a pay raise, right? Yes. Huh? They get, got a pay raise. And it used to be where they gave their first check to the church. Ooh, pastor, stop. I ain't going to come back next week. Huh? Oh, that's a hard thing. Huh? My wife did that one time. I remember her doing that. Ooh-wee! It felt like, oh, Lord, we gonna, no, we didn't suffer a bit. We didn't suffer a bit. After I had gotten the tight check, because every time in the morning we have a, when we have an exchange, she give me the tight check or the offering check, and I put the tight and offering check in there. I had got it the first time, did consent and dropped it into the offering, and then she called me back. She gave me a, I was like, woo, bless God, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. You see how much weight I lost over? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh, you, you see you see all the suffering I'm going through, God. Huh? Huh? Oh, my God. Lord, have mercy. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to testify to you, right? Since she gave that seed offering, hallelujah, I've had a pay raise of about $25,000. I'm on somebody. Hallelujah. You better hear me, hallelujah. I mean, it's been blessing after blessing after blessing. The blessings are chasing me down, tripping me up, pouring themselves into my life. I'm not able to do this. I'm not able to dodge the blessings, hallelujah. I'm not able to say, well, I'm going to go this way and dodge. You know the blessings are tackling me, saying, I'm going to bless you. See, this is when you begin to suffer for the righteousness of Christ, that the Lord will bless you in such a way. So as you exchange what's in your hand, God puts more into your ability. Huh? In exchange for you planting the seed, God gives you more. He gives you more. Come on, somebody, bless God. Bless God with a hand clap right there. Hallelujah. Love you all.